Welcome to Strange Weekly News. In this show, we take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over sh- over in the show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first-time viewers and listeners, and of course, everyone watching this live. Please show your support for my work by hitting that like button in this video, subscribing if you haven't already, and also hitting that notification bell as we do three live shows right here on this channel every single week. And it's 2024, baby. Got a QR code going on right here that has all the social media links, the website, Discord server, my space ambient music channel called Cosmic Portals. Just scan that QR code if you are watching this on a laptop or computer. It just makes things so much easier. But today I have some really, really interesting news, of course, starting off with UFOs. So let's get into that because next week, members of Congress will get a second classified briefing about UFOs by the Intelligence Community Inspector General. So this one is a little bit different than the last one they got Uh, in the sense of who's going to be providing this group information about UFOs. The first one that was a month or so ago, Tim Burchett, Burchett, however you want to say it, he was very, and the rest of them, Anna Paulina Luna, they were very disappointed. They said they didn't provide us any information that we didn't already know. Now for this second round, Starting next week, they're going to get a second classified briefing, but this time by the Intelligence Community Inspector General. So will they get answers or just be stonewalled yet again? News Nation special correspondent and investigative journalist Ross Coldhart fears that the House Oversight Committee will only get general information again. Shocking. And you know what? I can see that. I think that's a high possibility with the way things have been going so far for this group, this UFO caucus, whatever you want to call them, when we're dealing with Gates, Burchett, Luna, and Burleson. These are people that are really putting their their credentials on the line, really pushing for UFO transparency, trying to get the answers and saying, we are the House Oversight Committee. This information regarding UFOs should be shared with us instead of held against us almost. And so this is a really interesting journey that they are going on trying to push forward information. And of course, we have to ask ourselves, why? Why now? Is there a second agenda? Is there another reason to why they are pushing for this information? Are they just attempting to strengthen or stress their power when it comes to the government? There's so many different aspects to this. And I going to assume here that they probably all have their own agenda, their own reason on to why they are doing it while they are pushing for it. It doesn't, and when I say the word agenda, it doesn't mean that it has a negative connotation. It just means that they have their own reasons for why they are doing what they're doing. But when we're dealing with the government, it is very difficult. There are so many layers to it, and it's not very easy to read for the average person. But either way, Ross had mentioned to News Nation stating, quote, I think we're entitled to be skeptical because, unfortunately, the members of the Oversight Committee aren't all read in like the members of the intelligence community or the armed services community community committee, which is really important to emphasize because they don't have those clearances like those from the armed services committee or the intelligence committee. And that makes, it's awful to say, but it makes sense. And so it continues. They're not allowed to hear all the secrets. And so one of the questions marks that's still unresolved is just how much the inspector general of the intelligence community is going to be allowed to tell them. And that's the key word right there is allowed because they don't have the same kind of clearances as those from the intelligence committee, even when we're dealing with Grush as well. Right. So it's like, uh, it makes you want to pull out your hair. I get it. But you're, you're dealing 
with something that is so complex and anything can get the stamp of, oh, well, that's a national security threat and you don't have the need to know. Anything could be stamped like that and that's why there are so many secrets. Will they be given a clearance, referring to the people that we're seeing on screen right here? I would hope so. And if they are given that, it would be nice <laughs> to have that information be made public as we are paying them with our tax dollar dollars. We are paying their salary every single year. So I hopefully want that information to be public. Now, will it? As we saw from the first one, just a few months ago all they said was it's information that we already know and they couldn't really dive deeper into that i'm expecting for that to happen again but hopefully i'd love to be wrong here i it would make my day to be wrong and and to get a little a little extra piece of information that we weren't familiar with i'll be like yes this is why i'm alive for this kind of nuggets like chicken nuggies, delicious, right? Information nuggies, also amazing. Now, of course, for all the newbies out there just getting into the topic, hello and welcome. But we are aware for many, interest in UFOs surged over the past year since whistleblower David Grush alleged the Pentagon was operating a secret UFO retrieval program. And Grush said that he brought his concerns to the inspector general, including classified details he could not share with the public or Congress in an open setting. I'm bringing this up because the inspector general is also going to give these people that we're seeing on screen a briefing, referring to Burchette, Luna, Gates, Burleson, and maybe a few others. And so for this inspector general to first kind of talk with Grush and then to be able to do this briefing, it's going to be interesting to see if anything, we'll get that information. What I mean is if he will dive into any interesting and unheard of information. So that's the little detail when it comes to UFO news and the government and that again will happen next week, possibly next Tuesday or Wednesday. So when I know, I'll let you know, and maybe we'll get some answers to that. Getting into our next one here, and this this article I'm so flipping excited to talk about, because if you watch Strange News, not even religiously, but just from time to time, this painting has come up a handful of times. I even mentioned it in my 2023 round wrap-up of my favorite articles of the year. This one came up. I have more information about this painting, and I'm so stoked. But for those that aren't familiar with it, don't worry. I'm actually going to give you a nice detailed breakdown compared to the wrap-up video. That was kind of a sped-up summary version. This one, if you're into the paranormal, you're going to really enjoy this particular article. Because in August of 2023, the first article about a cursed painting of a young girl was published in the British media. And now, today, in 2024, the story has continued. So it all began when a Briton named Zoe Alton Brown saw a mysterious painting at a charity shop. And there was a note attached to the painting stating that it, quote, might be cursed as a previous customer had returned it and claimed that it had ruined her life. So when Zoe showed a photo of the painting to her mother, she seemed spellbound and urged Zoe saying, purchase it. This is, I need this painting in my house right here, right now. Go run to the store and go pick it up. So they hung the painting in their house and there after Zoe's mother fell under the influence of the painting, at least allegedly, experiencing various strange occurrences at home, while even their dogs began to growl at the painting, which is kind of bizarre. And Jay, thank you for that. Thank you for supporting the channel. You're so nice. So subsequently, Zoe, with in her right mind, she returned the painting to the store then reclaimed it, and then ultimately returned it again. That's a detail that I wasn't familiar with, and the more you know when you follow the story. So the painting was then sold for about £1,600 to another buyer by the name of James Kisslingbury. 
So according to James, his troubles began when he went to pick up the painting. His car suddenly broke down on the road. And then during this mishap, he also injured his collarbone. We weren't given little details on how those two are connected. Maybe he got into a little car crash or something, but that's just kind of weird there. But then upon bringing, bringing the painting to his, to his historical building, a tourist attraction, the large TV in the building suddenly malfunctioned and the Wi-Fi just disappeared. Dun, dun, dun. There's more because his employees also began noticing strange flickering and a mysterious figure in the black in black clothing. And then consequently, James decided to take the painting to his home. Okay, where the unsettled instances persisted. I'm just gonna reverse this just for a second. If you are having issues in your historical building, if you own a museum or whatever it may be, to say, you know what, there's a lot of weird things going on. You know what's a really bright idea? Let me take it home with me. That is stupid, but <laughs> depends who you ask, okay? But there's more to this. Because then the picture continued its paranormal activity, allegedly. And during the period from November to December of last year, looking like, honestly, just a few days ago, two unexpected floods occurred in the basement of his building. And according to James, noting like this had had ever happened, that has never happened here before, there were only small leaks prior to getting this painting. And he says here, we're lucky the building is strong enough so the damage wasn't too severe, but it was a bit unexpected. I know a cynic would say it's just a coincidence, but given the number of, of events that continue to happen, I really wonder if there is something that more than meets the eye with this painting. Then he continues, after I bought the, brought the painting to the new location, we kept it wrapped up in the back of our office for a while. And for a couple weeks, no one knew it was there. But staff began reporting sightings of shadowy figures following them. One of the employees even said that they kept hearing footsteps behind them. But when they turned around, there was nothing there. And on the day it was put in its place, our TV, quote, exploded. And then there were interruptions with the Wi-Fi. Exploded is a pretty big word to use for a television. But as a result, James decided to call a medium who, looking at the painting, said that most likely the girl in the painting was already dead when the artist painted it. And the artist might have been a spiritualist. I have a question. What does that even mean? What What is this medium saying when she's saying, yeah, so this this artist here, she might have been a spiritualist. That That's a very, very vague term. Uh, it could mean, it could honestly mean almost anything and everyone's going to have their own idea of that definition. But this is not an unfamiliar case. There have been other paintings that if you don't follow this show religiously, don't worry, I got you. Because there have been other paintings like The Woman in the Rain where a artist from Ukraine was painting up this painting called The Woman in the Rain. And it felt like her hand was being guided to paint that. And that painting was also haunted as the story goes. It was bought, returned, bought, returned multiple times. This one is also no exception to this. So we got to ask ourselves a question here. Are artists all wizards and witches? I'm just kidding. But on a serious note, when you are painting something, writing something, creating something, and you're putting intention or energy or thoughts, however you want to define it, can it cause something to be haunted? You have a spiritual aspect of its own. This is a, this is a legitimate question. It's not a woo question of like, oh, Christina, you're so woo and stoof. No, I'm I'm being very serious here. And I want to know your thoughts on that. Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. Because your insights, your opinions are very valuable, not only to me, but to everyone else that reads them as well. So that's this painting right here. But James still kept it. He's like, even though all these crazy things are happening, 
It's staying at my place. I'm keeping this bad boy. In this case, bad girl, because it's a young girl in a painting. But we're not given information on the artist, on when it was painted, and the the previous owners before it reached the hands of the charity shop in England. It's pretty weird, but okay, I'm going to flip this question over to you. If you knew a painting was haunted, would you still buy it? Would you say, you know what? For science. Let's do it for science. Would you? I know when I covered this painting and the story for our wrap up of 2023, People were writing in the live chat in the comments. They said, you know what? Let Christina buy it and let her figure it out and, and, and then report back to us. I wasn't even given the opportunity. Someone beat me to it. And they're saying crazy things happen. His car broke down. His collarbone broke. Leaks and floods in his basement. Flickering of the internet. The television exploding. Honestly, that's a pass for me. I would research it in someone else's building or location or home, but I would not take that with me. Why? Because my home is my sanctuary and I want to keep it a happy, nice place with infinite amount of ramen and maybe chocolate milk. I'm not going to bring any, any uninvited guests with me. Not today, not tomorrow, not anytime soon, but I will not say never. Like Justin Bieber once said, never say never. D says, why tempt fate? Run says, ask and ye shall receive. It's, it's some pretty wild stuff. It really is. Yeah, Miss Firejack says, never. That's like buying a haunted mirror. Terrible idea. Out of all the things to be haunted... A mirror is probably one of the spookiest next to any kind of doll, okay? I have had the pleasure of having several paranormal investigators on the show doing interviews with them. I know someone I mentioned that. Here it is. And they have conducted tests on certain dolls. I know um, Dave Schrader is one of them. And the other ones are escaping me at this moment. I've had a handful, so a lot. But... From their research, they say that there's just some very strange things and things that can just possess objects. And the question is why? I've also had Jim Harold on from from his Jim Harold podcast, and he's given a handful of pretty spooky stories, including an inch not an inchworm, but <laughs> but a Ouija board that moved like an inchworm, and even when it was put to death by fire, it still didn't burn. That story gave me a Skylos video. It's like that one gave me goosebumps right there. I was thinking, oh my goodness. I wanted to see that with my own eyeballs, but wasn't given the chance to do so. Okay, getting into our next one here. Now we're kind of going into a little bit of science, and I'm really excited about this particular article. It's not necessarily new information for many people that follow exploration when it comes to space, but if you are new to the topic and if you want to know a little more information about TRAPPIST-1 star system, this article is for you. It was just recently written, and that's why I am covering it. But the information isn't anything that's new from this week. But don't worry. Hang tight. We're going to discuss some really interesting theoretical points to this. And that's why I love strange news. So the TRAPPIST-1 system has captured the fascination of numerous astronomers, planetary scientists, and astrobiologists. And let me explain why this is, especially with the upcoming extensive research from the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST, also known as the Webb. So the TRAPPIST-1 is a star system that is a home to seven planets, named TRAPPIST-1b through H. And these planets are similar in size and mass to the terrestrial planets in our solar system, such as Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And their densities suggest they are rocky, which is truly encouraging news because most astrobiologists agree that for life to emerge, it likely needs a rocky planet with a surface rather than a gas giant like Jupiter. Now, it's not saying that planets such as Jupiter cannot harbor life, like it's it's not set in stone, but there's a lower chance of that. 
But what's even more exciting is that several of these rocky planets are located within the habitable zone of their star. This is why TRAPPIST, the TRAPPIST-1 star system, has gained so much attention over the years is for that little tidbit. Because the Goldilocks zone is the range of orbits where a planet's surface temperature could allow for liquid water believed to be crucial for life. And the TRAPPIST-1 system, planets E, F, G, all reside within the habitable zone. So that would be the best place for telescopes such as the JWST to look for life. But there is more information because in the recent years, there have been beliefs and ideas that they could harbor techno signatures. There were some kind of pulsating messages that were coming through, but then later debunked as being part of that star located there. Or is it? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> but it is a place that many believe could be a, a promising location for life. Now, is it intelligent life? That's where we're getting into the little interesting aspects. And I even did a little bit of research on how far the TRAPPIST-1 star system is. It is 39 light years away. Light years. So like, oh, that's all bad. But we do not have a piece of tech at this point in time that can travel at light speed. So when we're looking at New Horizons, which is the fastest spacecraft that flew past, past, past Pluto in 2015, it would take using that craft, that very conventional, I'm honestly, it's like caveman level when we're comparing it to advanced civilizations. But you know what? It's pretty significant to us here on planet Earth. So if we were to take a spacecraft like that from Earth, to the TRAPPIST-1 star system, it would take 800,000 years in order to reach that 39 light years. But then if we're going to take Voyager 1, for instance, that would be 685,000 years. But now, okay, we can't get on those. Those are too small for holding more than a handful of people. But let's say we were going to take SpaceX, for instance, or any kind of space shuttle. It would take 1.5 million years to reach the TRAPPIST-1 star system. And I want to talk about this because, as you know, I do try my absolute best to read all of your comments across social media platforms because your opinions matter. And there are some comments that honestly, honestly uh, make me, <laughs> what's the word I want to use? It makes me a little disappointed. Because I, I've had comments, not it's not about me or about the channel, but it's about the sense of, oh, how how can ET craft exist? How can UFOs exist? Look at our technology here on planet Earth. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. If you think like that, your brain is smaller than an atom, okay? You don't, you don't use it to the full capacity and you don't use your imagination. I, I'm saying it. I went there. I did. Now, those comments are very rare, bless them. Okay, I'm very happy about that. But with our conventional tech that uses fossil fuels, it's very disappointing. We, we are not going to get anywhere anytime soon traveling to any planets in the near future using our conventional technology. But once we get our hands on exotic matter or potentially even reverse engineering tech that has potentially crashed from other planets, that is when we're actually going to get somewhere and to maybe, or we don't have to travel from point A to point B in a linear fashion, but we could use portals, wormholes, you could even try and pray that if you go through a black hole, it might actually be a white hole and take you to another location, <gasps> like Albert Einstein with the Rosen, with the Rosen Bridge. Okay, I know I missed a word there, but you know what I'm talking about. So when we're thinking it like that, then I'm like, yes, I am so happy. This is awesome. This is exciting. But when you say we can't do it and it's impossible, your brain is this big. And you don't have imagination. And that's lame. Okay. Hides, thank you for that. Strange news is the best way to start the weekend. Thank you. And Cassidy, thank you for the RV fund. Y'all are so nice. Thank you so much for that. And let me, let me, let me spill this on over to you. If you were given the opportunity to take a one road trip 
to the TRAPPIST-1 star system, thinking that there could potentially be life, but not just your average plant life, microbial life, but intelligent life. Would you go? Would you take that risk? And I'm not saying it would take you 1.5 million years and you gotta gotta be in a hibernation state. I'm not saying that. I'm saying maybe, maybe it'll take you a few days, like an average trip trip, right? Would you go? Heck yes, I would go. Not even a question in my mind. I'd bring a backpack, a camera, a bunch of snacks because I never go anywhere hangry, ever. And I would say, take me to your leader. I am so stoked. I'm ready to go. That'd be so awesome. Now imagine this. Imagine, imagine, imagine just for a second. But let's have a little fun here, please. Let's say... And we're going to bring our sci-fi, you know, our sci-fi knowledge, our sci-fi imagination to this as well. Let's say, because the TRAPPIST-1 star system or any nearby solar system that has promising features near us, okay? What if it was just like a whole freaking, like, civilization going on there? Wouldn't that be so cool? Like like a, like a galactic federation. Oh, I'm in it to win it. I would say, heck yes, but I would need a translator with me or a translation device. That'd be very important. Otherwise, you're going in there and like a sore thumb. Can't understand anything or anyone. But aside from that, let's say you do have that piece of tech. <gasps> Imagine galactic ramen. If it's a thing, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I would go in a heartbeat. No questions. Give me that one-way ticket to paradise. A minute to win it. I actually listened to that song today. Not that particular song, but like two tickets to paradise. It sounds a lot better in my head when I'm actually like listening to it. I thought it doesn't hit the same compared to that just the chorus. But the rest of the song, nah, it wasn't. it wasn't that great. <laughs> Maybe some will agree. Many probably won't. But the chorus is fire. Everything else, not so much. Uh, I do want to say that if you are enjoying the show, hit that like button right down below and subscribe. Also, make sure that you are subscribed because when I had spoken to YouTube support, they had mentioned that they can neither confirm nor deny that this channel is shadow banned, but hitting that like button can really make a difference. So right now we have 350 people watching this live. Let's get to 300 likes if, and of course, only if you are enjoying the show. Getting into our next aspect here, and of course, all the articles that we cover will be in the description box below for you to read in more detail if you wish. But this next one, it's about the moon. And I love talking about the moon. But NASA is in collaboration with private space firms, uh, in, like such as Celeste, in, to, set, to transport human remains to the moon this month. This has happened before, and it gained a lot of attention, but a lot of controversy. People were not happy about this. This was a, a few months ago where I believe it was Celeste, they brought some kind of Neanderthal bone into space. Uh, really just as a flex, I think. And saying, like, look how cool I am. I'm, I'm the coolest person on the planet, and I'm dead. Okay? Referring to the bone here. They're going to do it again. And mm, people aren't digging it. So the Navajo Nation has expressed that they are fully against it, citing the moon's sacred significance in many indigenous cultures. Additionally, critics argue that this mission exemplifies the commercialization of space endeavors. And so the mission, um, referred to as TO2AB, is scheduled to launch on Monday, January 8th at 2.18 a.m. ET, as per NASA's announcement. And this marks the inaugural commercial robotic mission to the lunar surface, utilizing a United Launch Alliance, the ULA Vulcan Centaur rocket, to carry astrobotics lunar lander to the moon. Uh, 
So this is this is a this is a big deal referring to like just the tech and and the manpower it will take to launch. But in all of this, they're bringing in human remains, and I don't know. I I, I don't think it needs to be in that. I, I like I'm I'm attempting to use my brain capacity to think what would be a positive thing to place human remains on the moon. Putting people on the moon, yes, that's awesome. That's fantastic. That's a cool flex. But remains, uh, maybe, maybe I'm not a visionary enough to understand why they are doing that. Especially when you have so many people opposing against it. But I don't know. Please, if if you have insights that I do not, share it with me. Because I want to understand why these companies, these private companies, and NASA want to place human remains on the moon like for what purpose okay i want to know pot says rich people do weird stuff they do they have too much money and they don't know what to do with it they they, they really don't So upon successful landing, expected on February 23rd, the lander will commence its study of the moon's thermal properties, hydrogen levels, magnetic fields, and radiation. Additionally, the lander is carrying payloads, which include cremated human remains and DNA samples intended for permanent lunar placement. And the mission will also transport various other items including cryptocurrency themed payloads and a piece of Mount Everest. Um, all righty then. <laughs> I'm lost for words. That's cool. There have been a lot of missions, by the way. Let me just emphasize this. There have been a lot of missions. There's been a lot of rockets that have gone around the moon where they take random stuff, uh, seeds, Snoopy, Barbie, so on and so forth. They've been doing this for a really long time. And they'll, like I said, they'll, they'll just bring the, the most random things into space just for fun. Maybe it's another reason to it. But in this case, they're placing on the moon human remains, DNA samples, cryptocurrency-themed payloads, and a piece of Mount Everest. So I, there can be so many theories and ideas, or it could be totally random. But see, I don't think NASA operates on random. I don't. I, I don't think so. There has to be a reason for it. Now, what is that reason? Will they make that information public? Maybe they'll, they'll give you a little fluff answer and say, well, yeah, I think it's super cool. But is that the actual answer? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. So let's think about this just for a moment. There's, there's been a lot of rumors, a lot of stories for people that say that there have been habitats on the moon for some time. There is cooperation between extraterrestrials and humans. And I, these are these are merely just rumors. They're merely just conspiracy theories. But but let's just take it with a grain of salt. But let's consider it just for a moment, okay? Just for a second. Let's have a little fun together. Let's say that were true. This would make a little bit more sense to send this kind of random stuff to the moon. Now, NASA and other companies they do want to make it more habitable by the year 2030. So they should be taking more equipment instead of a piece of Mount Everest and cryptocurrency-themed payloads. Don't you think? That would make more sense and would make your trip worthwhile than taking this kind of rando stuff if and only if there weren't maybe other like beings, people there. Again, I, I have no clue whatsoever. I want to have a little fun with using our our imagination thing, thing outside of the box here, but it's just a weird one. Okay. And, and Brett, thank you for that. Christina's interstellar spacecraft fun. This will go far. Trust me. Thank you so much. And Brian subbed to cosmic portals. If you enjoy space ambient music, check out my channel called cosmic 
portals. I have short tracks, about two hours. I just made an eight hour track. And if you are a big fan of Blade Runner, you're going to really enjoy that one. So thank you guys so much for shouting it out and for also supporting the channel as well. You guys are stinking awesome. Thank you for that. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to quickly read in the live chat that people have a lot of mixed ideas when it comes to the moon. And, and I get it. It's a very confusing place with confusing information that goes all over the place. I, I can get that. So please, if you have any answers to any of my questions, put them in the live chat. Put them in the comments because I want to understand your viewpoint. And I also, I really want answers to this. Why are you sending these pieces of elements and items to the moon? But what? So this one also goes into great more detail on this. But I will say this. In response to the backlash, Celeste CEO Charles Schaefer defended the mission, asserting that no single religion or culture should impose restrictions on space exploration. And he emphasized the importance of not allowing religious belief to hinder humanity's space endeavors, suggesting that accommodating the multitude of world religions could paralyze space exploration. And the debate surrounding this mission reflects broader concerns about the ethical, cultural, and commercial implications of expanding human activities into space. As the mission proceeds, it continues to spark discussion about the respect for sacred spaces, the commercialization of, final, of the final frontier, and the inclusivity of future space missions. So you're dealing with a lot here with just sending human remains to the moon and a few other little tidbits. People overall are not happy with it, but Celeste is putting their foot down and they're saying, I do not care about you or your feelings. I'm going to do what I want. And that's a, it's kind of a take it or leave it kind of deal. And most people aren't taking it. Into our next one. Now that we've hit the new year, we're in 2024 as of very recently. This is this is the time where people make New Year's resolutions. And now that AI has become more prevalent in people's lives, they think to themselves, what should I do this year? What should I do different for my New Year's resolution? Oh, you know what I should do? Let me ask AI. Let me ask ChatGPT. Let's see what information it will give me and maybe it'll make me into a better person that I want to be. So <laughs> with this, it gave us some very interesting ones and maybe you want to take a few, leave a few, make up your own, do whatever you want. And it doesn't matter because if you fall down that little barrel, and you go back to your old habits, don't worry. Chinese New Year is coming up. Rosh Hashanah is coming up, okay? One, February 10th, okay, Chinese New Year. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year coming October 2nd. And there's a few more in between. So whenever you feel like you're going down, you're not meeting your requirements for your New Year's resolution, the calendar is forgiving. And it will give you many opportunities to do so. So getting into this, I got some pretty fun ones for you. Starting off with a monthly themed dinner party. So if you are an extrovert and you like planning things, those are two very hard things to do side by side, by the way, you can host a monthly themed dinner party like Vikings. Like, like Vikings or I don't know, Halloween in, in December or the Grinch, I don't know, maybe like your favorite SpongeBob character, or dressing up as like random fruits, I don't know, it doesn't even matter, whatever you want, your imagination is the limit here, you could do that, or you can also research your family history, this is kind of random, so Bard, which is the Google AI one, recommends delving into your family history to construct a family tree, like what you did back in elementary school, Okay, then you have ChatGPT says, why not have a one plant based day per week? This is a really great one. One, it teaches you that you to like broaden your kitchen recipes, which is super awesome, by the way. And people don't know how 
good vegetables can taste. It's like, oh, well, broccoli's lame and cauliflower is lame. But when you cook it, right? Ooh, okay, chef kiss, chef kiss everywhere because it's so delicious. And I have some bomb recipes that I could share with you that are 10 out of 10 that only involve vegetables, okay? Our next one is start a one sentence journal. So Chad GBT also suggests keeping a one sentence journal recording daily gratitude or interesting events. And this low pressure approach to journaling can be a reflective and manageable habit. Hey, rock on. You can also commit to a digital detox. Have it be for a day, have it be for a week. Now in today's world, that's not easy to do, okay? Especially when a lot of people's jobs revolve being online. Not everyone has that luxury, myself included. But you can also, I love this one, write a handwritten letter weekly. Have it be to your family, to your loved one, maybe to your future self. That's a great one because people now have the worst handwriting you could ever imagine because you can just type everything out. My handwriting, garbage. It's so bad. And I have to blame someone that isn't myself. So I'm going to blame my amazing keyboard that does spell check for me, gives me good handwriting. Yeah, it's great. But go back to writing handwritten letters. Also, conquering a childhood fear. <gasps> this is a really good resolution. This is one that actually like helps build character. Because when you are able to help your inner child, okay? This is, you're, you're, you're long, you'll, you will no longer be scared of spiders or flying cockroaches or maybe, I don't know, rejection. Who knows? That's a really good one, okay? Also invest in stocks and the craziest one by Bard, which is become a human calendar. This one's a wacky one because it proposes the unusual challenge of becoming a human calendar, training your brain to recall the day of the week of any given date. It's a, you know what? It's random, but if you like using that kind of brain capacity, who's stopping you? It's, the great thing about resolutions is that you're able to think about all the ways that you want to improve, usually yourself. Do, now, now, do I do resolutions? I do them every day. Not every day. That's an absolute lie. I do them from time to time, but I do not allow January 1st to be my side in stone. If I go down the band that go down that little hill, I won't be like, oh, well, I guess next year, 2025 is going to be my year. No way. If I'm going down that road of like whatever is happening, I'm going to say tomorrow. You know what? This evening. I'm going to change it up. And that's kind of the mentality to have. But a New Year's resolution is a good place to start. It is. Okay. Now, this one. This one's kind of funny. This one is kind of funny. I'm not... <laughs> and I might, I have my best for last. So I have two more articles for you. This one, my favorite one of all time for this week, at least. So this one is about poop planes. Bop, bop. So this Firefly Green Fuels CEO James Highgate and his company have innovatively turned human waste into kerosene, a nearly identical substitute for standard fuel, fossil jet fuel. We've seen this before. Tractors had mentioned this in early 2023, and that didn't really kick off highly. Could it happen here? This is really exciting. It goes to show that we do not have to depend on fossil fuels. There are so many other ways to gain energy, receive energy, achieve energy, whatever word you want to put there in front of energy. There are so many ways to do it. When we're dealing with solar energy, yes, it's great, but it's not great if you live in a cloudy place. Wind energy, it's honestly awful, okay? You have it super loud turbines, and you're cutting down hundreds of trees for turbines that do not create hardly any energy. Then you have fossil fuels, which is one that we've been using for the longest time. That's the most promising, but also that makes the most money, and money 
follow the money, right? Here, we're dealing with poop fuel. And this is what I, when you don't think about it, it's just crazy information because it had mentioned in this particular article that was written by the BBC, it was stating that in the UK, they are getting so much sewage that, that not all of it can be cleaned and filtered. So thousands of tons of sewage get dumped into rivers and oceans. And when you, when you think about it, just for a second, right? You're like, mommy, let's go to the beach. You're swimming in fecal matter, not just from your, your dear marine life, but also from humans. I don't know. That one kind of bothered me, and I, I never thought about it until this moment reading this article, and I said, mm, not only is the ocean monster soup, but it's also poopy soup. Mm, hard pass there. But so with this, they're saying at this company that they are able to convert the sewage into fuel, and that's fantastic. Now, will that get approved? Will they be making bajillions of dollars doing so? Will they save the planet by doing this? If it's not making a ton of dough, probably not. But I would like it to. Again, tractors in the States were doing this. They had this idea. It was as a prototype. It had almost made the market. And then we haven't heard any information since. And that article came out January or February of last year. Follow the money. That's what it's all about. Elle says, still bothering me. Yeah. And you guys making a lot of funny jokes. No. <laughs> Mark says, where are these guys Nobel Prize for turning poop into fuel? Maybe they will get a prize. That would be, that'd be pretty interesting. But this, this information isn't anything new. There have been a handful of other uh, companies that have done things similar. But none of them have really kicked off. And you can ask yourself why. This next one, I am excited to share because it's actually a video. And for those watching this on a video platform, have it be YouTube or Rumble or wherever else, you know I have Puck the Puck Wedgie that sits on my microphone almost every single show. Puck the Puck Wedgie, he is a goblin from the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts. Goblin stories are prevalent throughout cultures all across the globe with different names. You got gnomes, you got leprechauns, you got goblins, you got puck wedgies, so on and so forth. Argentina allegedly captured a video. Oh, what happened? Why is it so big? Captured a video of a goblin through a regular home camera. And I thought I got to share. This is so fun. And could it be a hoax? Yes, it could. But I thought, it's strange. This is strange news. Let's go ahead and cover this. I'm going to share my screen here, and I put it on repeat. Excuse me. So let's get into this one. There it is. Okay, let's play it. I'm going to play it, play it in normal speed and then in high speed. So a security footage from Argentina shows a small shadowy figure sprinting alongside of a road and some believe that the eerie runner was a goblin and according to the local media report which is radio 3 the strange scene unfolds on christmas eve in the town of jose de san martin and was captured by a camera connected to the home of a police officer in the community the puzzling footage begins with a dog fiercely barking as it stands at the front gate of the house. And then seconds later, a seemingly hunched over figure runs down the road with such tremendous speed that it appears blurry in the video until it eventually disappears from the camera's view. Once this was posted online, the video quickly went viral in Argentina with various theories being offered to what the security camera captured. Some suspected that the figure could have been a goblin of the Latin American lore. And that said, not everyone was convinced of that being the explanation. Exp 
explanation as more skeptical observers argue that the creature was simply a person who appeared to look unusual due to the distance and lighting as well as the speed with which they ran. And of course, some dismiss the video entirely as being CGI. This is a weird one. I, I want to hear your thoughts on what you think is going on here. Let me say this, however. It's worth noting that, first of all, you have local media in Argentina covering this with a level of seriousness, but more so, this was captured from a police officer's home camera, and then he made it public. Now, do we have his name? No. Could he have lied that he was a police officer? Of course he could have. It's not a smart idea to lie, but can you do it? Sure, you sure can. When looking at this video, what captures my attention, because I'm looking at the dog, I'm trying to understand the average speed. Was this, was this video sped up? And so the dog is giving me that reference point, and it doesn't look like it is. But now this fast-moving figure, this thing is speeding so quickly, and it matches so many legends from across the globe of how fast goblins, gnomes, leprechauns, these kinds of entities, how fast they can move, again, according to the legends that have been passed down through the generations for centuries. And so also, I, I do have a little soft spot, okay, for these stories and fairies as well and mermaids, okay? It, it, it hits my childhood really hard. And that's where my bias is. And I'm not going to lie. I don't have biased because I do with this one. But I thought, at the very least, it's worth mentioning. And then you can make up your own mind on what you think it is. If you think it's legitimate or you think it's a hoax. At the very least, you had a little fun watching the video, right? And in some ways, that's what I want to achieve. It's entertainment and information and stimulating the imagination. All of these different things, those things are very important to me that they are achieved in every show. So what did you think about that article and that video? Hmm? Hmm? Real? Not real? Goblin? Human? CGI? I want to know. Tell me. How is the camera moving, says Jack. Good point. It could have been controlled by that person, or it could have been motion censored, maybe. Great question. Maybe a little bit of both. Well, those are all of my articles today. The timeline index and the links will be in the description box below. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live. All the super chats, super stickers. I, I'm, I keep forgetting that one word. It's the word stickers. Um, YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and of course, all of my amazing moderators. Here is the QR code for all of my social media links, the website, the Discord server, and of course, my music channel, which is Cosmic Portals. You just scan this. If you are watching this on a laptop, grab your phone, take a picture of it, and it will take you straight there. We're in 2024. We can do this kind of stuff. But if you're listening to this, follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. And also on Instagram at strange paradise where I share pictures and short videos. If you want to continue the conversation, bring it over to my Discord server with almost 3,000 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. Don't forget to subscribe. We do three live shows right here every single week. And I'm, I'm so excited for my Patreon updates. So if you want to be a Patreon, do it rather shortly because there's going to be some really cool benefits coming up. And I won't tell you until it actually happens. So all that funding goes straight to the channel, to Puck, and to the RV fund. But you're going to be getting some really sick perks that no one else will. Okay? Just keep that in mind. But that is it for today. I will see you soon. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.